bunts, the bunts came through. Steven. The bunts. It is Steven. the bunts. The one and doing? only. How are you, How are you doing? doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. Just chilling. I just tried oh, to I fucking came to talk to you about the, edit a video shit real and quick. Uh, just not feeling it. I'm not okay. feeling it. So I'm going to re-record everything. Yeah. Oh, um, he wasn't feeling it? He, no, no, I wasn't feeling it. Oh, oh no, that's okay. The other guy would never agree. Trust me. There's no, no, no possible no, no. way we're, he would we're ever. Talking, we're, talk, we're talking about two different things right now. I was talking about editing a video, and I didn't feel it, so I'm just, I'm just oh. giving you know, a bit of life information here. Oh yeah, uh, that's needless, okay. needless information is totally fine. Okay. Uh, no, I haven't, I haven't actually pitched it to him yet, but uh, I'm gonna pitch it to him. No, so, don't. He won't. He, you can try, but make sure you call okay. him a big baby when he fights. I, I, I make things happen. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Um, hold on. I'm just curious. I want to listen to something together, and then you can give me your opinion about it. Okay. Sure, can I do I have to watch it at the same time? Yeah, we, we're going to do it. I'm going to link it on a circle. It's like two minutes long, okay? Okay. Wait, what's this website called? Like Circle TV? My, my, MyCircle.tv. Oh, MyCircle.tv. This arbitrary and oppressive... All right, I'm sending you a meme, okay? Okay. I want to give you full context to everything that's going on right now, okay? You ready? Okay. Okay. So a long time ago, from a whole other convoluted scenario, there were chat logs of mine that ended up getting leaked from a conversation, okay? In those chat logs, um, I was talking about how it's crazy some of these, like, 15, 16-year-old fangirls or whatever that try to, like, send you pics and, like, get with you. Like, some of these chicks are, like, ridiculous. So that was, like, more or less the conversation, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, it's happened. So, yeah, sure. So in this conversation, that's all I ever say. I never say, like, I fucked a 15-year-old. This chick sent me nudes. Um, you know, I tried to get with a 15 Never said any of that. Okay, well, right? I'm, not, I'm not trying to, like, I'm, mm -hmm. by the way, I'm not here to try to attack you or try to figure out what the fuck you're yeah, doing. Yeah, no, no, oh, no, no, I, mean, I understand. I can ask you those questions so, afterwards, but. Yeah, so I'm just giving this as, 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 as provided. So, like, there was literally, like, one line from a chat log. And um, the, I think, Thorin and, like, that Ian dude are using it to call me a pedophile, okay? Now, I want to watch this. You have this loaded? Let's watch this clip of um of Milo, okay? And I want you to tell me what you think about it. Are you ready? Mm hmm Okay. We're starting in three, two, one, go. This arbitrary and oppressive idea of consent, which totally destroys, you know, um the you know, the understanding that many of us have of the complexities and subtleties and complicated nature of many relationships. You know, people are messy and complex, and actually in, in, in a homosexual world particularly, some of those relationships between younger boys and older men, the sort of coming of age relationships, the relationships in which those older men ha help those young boys to discover who they are and give them security and safety and provide them with love and and, uh, um, and, uh, and a reliable uh, and sort of a rock where they can't speak to their parents. Some of those relationships are it some like of the most station to me. It, it sounds yeah, well, like you know what? You it know sounds what? like I'm Catholic grateful. priest molestation to me. And you know what? I'm grateful for Father Michael. I wouldn't give nearly such good head if it wasn't for him. And yet here you are talking about how, look, you know, some of these kids that get diddled by these priests, I mean, it's a good thing for them. They're getting this love. And now they are also getting it. You're misunderstanding. No, no, no. You're misunderstanding what pedophilia means. Um, pedophilia is not a sexual attraction to somebody 13 years old who is sexually mature. Pedophilia okay. is attraction to, to children, to children oh. who have not reached puberty. Pedophilia is attraction to people who don't have functioning sex organs yet, who have not gone through puberty, who are too young to be able to and understand culture. the way their bodies. That is not what we're talking about. <laughs> you are, you are. Wait, Stephen, how old is Stephen? How old is this? Relate? How old is this? Um, I don't know, a couple of years. Okay, I, I like. What I feel is that he had to deal with that shit and he had to fucking cope with it, and now he's using his fucking experiences and the way, and manner in which he coped with it, and he's projecting it, and he's saying, you know what? This is what I feel pedophilia is. It's not pedophilia. I'm not a victim of pedophilia. It's okay. I'm totally fine. I'm fine. No, it's fine. I'm so thankful for Father because he allowed me to suck good head. Like, this is what I'm doing, guys. It's okay. Don't worry about it. And then, of course, he's conflating all of these other issues where other people who feel like they got touched and they're like, fuck, this is pedophilia because you took advantage of me. Like, and, and of course, in, in this situation, he's also been taken advantage of, but he's trying to cope with it. And in trying to cope with it, he's fucking being this guy that's like, Oh, it's not, that's not that's not the defined version of pedophilia. Pedophilia is like for kids and stuff like that. Okay, but he's saying which, that which is arg which is which is arguable, by the way, because of the fact that they like you can't argue that you can't argue like they have sexual feelings. Like I had sexual feelings that like as a, as a fourteen year old kid. You know, sure, like, but I, you understand that like a thirteen year old boy power. having a sexual 
He's well, a, a 13 year old boy having a sexual relationship with someone in their 30s is probably not good, right? Of course, of course not. And that and that has to do with I think I but think it has to that's what Milo. Maturity, that's what Milo. Well, no, there's no level of maturity. I don't think where a 13 year old can enter a sexual relationship on equal grounds with a 30 plus year old, right? No, no, of course not. Of course not. So, but, like, that, but that's what Milo's good. advocating here. How can somebody like Ian defend Milo here as not but, a? No, but he's not. I don't. That's the thing, though. If you now, if you take this and then you you come you juxtapose it with his PR speech that he gave. He gave a PR speech it's like after right after uh, he got um, nailed for this. Got called yeah, exactly. He gave a PR speech. He said, "Listen, like he's like," uh, and then he explained himself. He and I don't remember everything he said in detail, but when I heard it, I was. I was alarmed by the stuff that he was saying on on the Joe Rogan podcast because he also repeats this on the Joe Rogan podcast, which means that he was pretty confident about what he had to say, which is really interesting. Like he was really confident enough to go ahead and bring this from one podcast to another podcast, you know. And it's just like it, for me, like I find that interesting on its own. So it means he probably felt strongly about it, and he and it, and it has a lot to do with the way in which he wanted to cope with this. And of course, like I do, and like everybody else does. We all try to project these like opinions to people and show them like this worked for me. This is how it is for me. And it can work for you, too, when there's so much more there between all of us. There's all this other shit going on. OK, so, so like, like that's why you're giving me lots of Milo. you're giving me lots of reasons to explain why Milo is advocating for underage boys to have relationships, sexual relationships with older men. No, you no, I feel like I feel like you have already made your conclusion about him. So that's well, no, 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 because he literally said younger boys, older men, thirteen-year-old boys, and he says cross-generational relationships are good in the homosexual community. Did he say that at the beginning? Okay, let's go well, back. Let's, well, no, no, he, he, he well, didn't say it in the beginning, but he he goes on to say that like um, a little bit after we pause it. I'm sorry. Are we um? No, you, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hold on, hold on. I gotta go back to the circle thing. One second. Um. Okay, you ready? Yeah, uh, there's like 30 seconds left, so. Yeah. Here. Can we can we be honest about that? Yeah, I don't mind saying I don't mind admitting that, and I think particularly in the wait, I'm backing world, up a little because he just said it. Hold on, so I'm backing up here. To be able to and understand Coulter. the way their bodies. That is not what we're talking about. And <laughs> you are you are advocating for cross generational relationships here. Can we can we be honest about that? Yeah, I don't mind saying I don't mind admitting that, and I think particularly in the gay world and outside the Catholic Church, if that's where some of you want to go with this, I think in the gay world, some of the most important, enriching, and incredibly um, you know life affirming, important, uh, shaping relationships, very often between uh, younger boys and older men, can they can be hugely positive experiences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I know how it seems. I know how it seems. But once again, I think he's speaking purely from perspective, his own perspective, and of course, that's what anyone can do. Okay. So, well, do you see how it might bother me that I get Ian it. I totally will see, yeah. Ian will defend this and say, "Well, this isn't pedophilia," but then one line in a chat log gets me instantly branded as a pedophile. Yeah, I can. I can. Okay, so Destiny, I feel like all of this stems from major personal grudges with everyone in some form of like community. No, There's it's not. No, it it really is this. It's, it comes out. It, it like, really is. Can, 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 can you see like how this is uh, irritating that they slam the left uh, so hard when they don't slam their own so hard? Or isn't it interesting like how like they're not? He's he thinks this is totally okay, but then a chat uh, like a little line from a chat log is, is suddenly on a pedophile. It's the same thing as Ian being called a Nazi every time they get pull up some fucking dumb chat log from 2002 where he's talking about like. Hitler being his idol, which is just so ed an edgy, dumb thing to do on the internet. Okay, so and firstly, like Ian attacked me first tonight, which he has done multiple times in the past because he was upset when I exposed John Tron for being a pretty racist person. So Ian has already been, like, uh, against me. Um, a lot of people were after that John Tron debate, firstly. Secondly, remember what we talked about before? Like, I feel like just because the other side does it, the, the, I thought this was supposed to be a community of people that rose above that. I, I didn't know that, like, well, the left does it or crazy SJWs do it, and we spent all of our time making fun of yeah. them, and now we're going to do it too. Isn't that a little bit ridiculous? I get it. I get I get because you've I get that you've established that with me. So are you trying to establish this mentality with other people in the yeah. community? No, it was never personally about you. It was about know, this entire I know, community. I know. Exactly. So you're trying to establish this mentality of the community. Yeah. Like, like, like holding them to that, that it standard, happens right? Every, yeah, that it happens yeah. across this entire community. You could be doing it in a much fucking nicer way, bro. That's he all I'm started saying. off the conversation I, I know, by calling me a pedophile. Because, because people, because the thing is, though, Stephen, is that you're an easy guy to fucking hate. 
I'm sorry. I don't want to be this. I'm not being a dick here. I'm just saying that you're an easy guy to hate because you come off as very arrogant. You come off as I know everything. And I can, I guess. Okay. So the reason, no, no, but that's, that's bullshit. No, listen, like you guys are expecting me to act like the Pope. Like you're expecting me to act in an impossibly mature way. I mean, like, I guess if I, you're you're capable of it, you're able to do it with me. Dude, you're able to do it with me. After I I talked to John Tron, dude, after I talked to John Tron, every single account, both my emails and old one that I don't even use anymore, my pay. PayPal and my bank were trying people were trying to hack my accounts like I was up like that whole night with my phone fucking vibrating because of like alerts I had tens of thousands of mentions from every single person in the skeptosphere tweeting bullshit at me and that includes the big people like Chris Raygun like Thorin like Armored Skeptic like Richard Lewis like all these fucking people tweeting at me and you expect me to like take that all in a jolly jive and then when these random fucking creeps come out of nowhere and start calling me a pedophile I'm supposed to engage them in in like uh, uh in good conversation like do you have any idea how much you're asking for me that's really hard to do yeah and and uh yeah that's uh that's that is pretty intense you described quite a bit there that is very intense and i do apologize <laughs> for being a little bit insensitive i guess i just come from a very privileged place but the thing is is that like uh yeah uh i think that you now understand that there there is an opportunity for discussion they're not just there to fuck with people so like the idea is that like just now you can do it you can do I it. mean, it's really sure hard, it. but it's hard I... to get them to even do it. That Malthy Buddha guy, for instance, my first interaction with Malthy Buddha was after I had a conversation with John Tron. He made a little six-minute bullshit hit piece video on me that I think he's removed since then. And then when I asked him to talk about it, he ducked out of a convo with me. And he just made like a, a little five-minute character assassination piece. I'm just curious how, like, because you keep saying I'm really easy to hate, right? And I can understand that. But, like, the reason why I'm easy to hate is because everybody decided they hated me after my conversation with John Tron, where he said that he wanted a white majority United States. And he said he wanted Hispanics to integrate into the gene pool. And he said that he thought that blacks in Africa were like blacks in America. I was the one that came out of this conversation, the bad guy. How? <laughs> like... I need to I, I need to watch that whole stream. I only saw the segments that were given to me. The, like the, like the f- four or five second clips that Sargon posted with the communism thing with the Hispanic. No, 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 not even the communist thing. The the uh, it was the it was like the whole like uh, riots in Sweden thing. Oh That's sure, the riots in Sweden thing where you were like, no, they're not happening. No, were- well, that my resp- John Tron thought that Europe was literally burning down, and my response was that Europe is not burning down. Obviously, there are some problems there, but the whole of Europe, the whole of Sweden, the whole of the United Kingdom is not like on fire and being ravaged by immigration. Yeah, yeah. Well, he was definitely really uh, misinformed in that whole fucking debate. Sure, he definitely was. That if was you ever have time to watch that debate and you watch it with like an open mind. Honestly, like, I mean, I maybe, just maybe give, I give come off like a, as a little smug, but it's really hard for a reasonable person to take me out of there as the bad guy after all the crazy fucking shit that John John says. Like, well, then what's this deal? What's this deal that I've been hearing about you, like, kind of doxing a chick? What's that about? <clears throat> so, like, everything you've ever heard about me has been ripped out of context so hard. Do you, do you want to hear the story, I guess, or... Yeah, I'd like to so, hear the story. Okay, so here's like, well, this is what happened. I, and I'm the only one apparently that remembers what happened. Like, so this is kind of like the concise version, okay? So I fucked around with a chick that I probably shouldn't have. I said some mean things about her. She hacked my Twitter and she posted my dick on Twitter, okay? It was stupid of me. I admit it. I totally, fu- it was a dumb thing on my end. And that's what happened. She leaked my Twitter and she leaked some chat logs. These are the chat logs that you see um, that everybody posts about, right? Um, I was obviously very fucking mad right when it happened. And I wrote some stuff on uh, my subreddit because she was writing, she was talking shit on my subreddit or something and i wrote some shit like okay well fuck you like i'm gonna email your school or whatever and i'm gonna get you kicked out of school because you're literally on my twitter um like posting my dick and whatnot that's all i ever said i never threatened to dox anybody i never posted any of her personal information i never posted her address or even threatened to there was no threat of doxing anywhere in there and after i'd cooled off after a day or two i didn't even like i didn't even say anything else to her like we pretty much made our piece like you do you do understand that by just saying that though like like saying that publicly and being like I'm going to contact your school or something like that and just like let them know that give, gives your audience motivation to find out where this girl's school is. Do you un- you do know that, right? Like by doing that, because this your audience does idolize you, your audience looks up to you. I can see it. They're fucking. Dude, yeah, they sure. Were, no, they, no. They and and, and, angry and, 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 and I can kind of 
I can kind of maybe get that. I mean, like, if we're being totally honest, maybe. That wasn't what I was thinking at the time, though. Like, I was super raged at the time. Like, if you had somebody break into yeah, your Twitter yes. and post your fucking dick while yes. you're at an event, I had yes. to drive back from an event, like, while it happened. Like, I was really... But this was, like, literally, like, this was shit that I typed, like, literally that night, and nothing ever came from it. I never contacted an employer. I don't think any of my fans tried to dox her. Um, I don't... I, I've never heard about this happening at all. And I'm friends with her now. Like, anytime I fly through SFO, we usually get coffee and chat. Like, we're cool. But, like, everybody keeps making it out. Like, I literally destroyed this girl's life. And a lot of people say that she's underage, even though she's, like, one year younger than me. A lot of people say that I, like, raped her um, and that I was in an abusive relationship with her, even though we never dated. There's, like, a million different stories. Like, every time somebody talks about this, I read, like, a new fanfic about my life. Um, like, this literally happened in 2012. <laughs> like, it was, like, five years ago. Hmm. But, um... <laughs> Yeah, no, no like, the, the, it's like, no, I, yeah, no, like, I've yeah. never doxed no, anybody like, or anything in my entire life. Do you want to hear another meme you've probably heard about me that I planned on murdering somebody? Yeah, <laughs> well, I've seen that clip. I've seen that clip. Sure. Do you know what that was in reference to? No. Okay. So a lot of people, when they when they type about this, it's because I lost a video game to some guy, so I wanted to go and murder him. So back in the early days of the internet, streamers didn't have any protections against anything. So if people wanted to DDoS you, you just kind of got fucked. So I was at a point in my life where a kid had contacted me, um, was taunting me about DDoSing me, and then for the next like three to six months, proceeded to like destroy my stream. So I have a family, I have a child, I've got a house, I have real bills to pay, and my shit is fucked. I had three separate interviews with the FBI where they didn't help me ever even though i had the full information of this kid because they didn't care because i was a gamer i contacted the kid to get him to stop i contacted his father and i traded emails with his father where his father pretty much said his son was too smart to do that and that i should make friends with him so i went through i exhausted all of my legal channels and i exhausted all of my reasonable channels i contacted him i had cox out to my house like 50 million times to see if there's anything they could do i had like a fancy fucking router like there was no nothing i could figure out at the time and you know being really fucking upset i was like dude like i have to find this fucking kid and kill him. Like, this is fucking ridiculous. Um, it's hard to understand, I guess, because I'm a streamer, but this would be the equivalent. If you've ever worked a conventional job, if some guy showed up outside your house every single day and slashed your tires every single fucking day and you could never call the cops no, no, on him yeah, and you literally yeah. like, I'm losing like thousands and thousands of dollars because I can't stream. I can't pay my bills. Like, so, you know, is murder okay? Obviously not. Was I really fucking mad though? Like that's, a, this story is a lot different than a guy beat me in a video game and I threatened to kill him, right? It is, but I no one, no one has ever really said that. Like I haven't paid attention to that. Like that's something when someone says that, like I like okay, well I think that's a little bit exaggerated. Like a guy, you know, he he's threatened to kill someone over mm -hmm. a fucking video game. I always thought there was more to it. But the 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 key point, the key takeaway that a lot of people seem to highlight on is the fact that you know you the only thing stopping you was the fact that you're a successful streamer. And that that's something that you say in your video. So like it's the way it comes off. Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, I'm fucking hyperbolic as fuck when I speak, right? Am I realistically ever going to kill somebody? Probably not. But could it have escalated to physical, like, something? I don't know, man. Like, what would you do in my position? I'm curious. What would I do in your position? Yeah. You you got the cops involved. You got I can't, Yeah, three interviews with the FBI, one at a friend's house, one at my house, and then another one at uh, my house, I think. It was 111. <clears throat> And uh, friends, friends, do you have family friends, do you have friends anywhere, anywhere, like... Well, I mean, he did ask me wherever I went, he did ask me at my main home, he did ask me when I visited my parents, and then he did ask me when I visited my, uh, my team owner, when I was at his house, he did ask us there too. That's really fucked up. So what would you do? Sort of it's really frustrating. And imagine that you have a child, you've got child support, you've got a house, you've got real bills to pay. I'm not like a, I'm not like all the teeny boppers that get into streaming and are just kind of freeballing it. Or like I have real life commitments. This is a kid. This is a kid, huh? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, Jacob. Yeah. Fuck, man. I I don't even know. It's really I don't rough, even right? Know the situation. I I'd probably I'd be pretty pissed, but yeah, I'd probably I probably make a uh, I probably make a. I probably make a plea to my audience, and then to I would do be like, what? This is what's, this is what's happening. I'll just be like, "This is what's happening, and this is what's going on," and then like let people know. And then, yeah, but what? Then but then what? I still can't stream. <laughs> I just yeah. lose all my money. I can't. I mean, how this happened for how long? Like six months. The only solution to this was for me to pioneer like the most used DDoS guide on the internet. I had to figure out all of it. If you Google right now DDoS prevention guide, I'm like the first link that comes up. Valve link to my guide, right? Like I had to figure all of this shit out on my own. Like no joke. Like that was the only way to make it stop. There was nobody to help me. Nobody on any team fucking helped me. Nobody in any fucking area fucking helped me. I had to figure out all this fucking shit on my own. But like that, but it was like either that, it was like either figure out something that nobody on the internet had figured out up to that point. I'm not trying to suck myself off, but like, I mean, it was pretty much true. Or, um, or, or I don't know, fuck, like show up and like physically intimidate the guy.
you were six pages on this fucking guide. It's like legit, it was legit, like the the yeah, it was like the definitive, the like this was like the most comprehensive fucking shit for securing your Skype. Like I helped TSM set some shit up. Um, I talked to a lot of different team owners. Like yeah, like this is like if you read like Riot's guide, I think they link to mine at the bottom. I think Valve had a link to theirs and their Dota shit. Like, <clears throat> but like this was the only way I could figure out how to do it was like to do something. But like, do you do you see like the frustration? I'm not trying. I'm not sitting here and asking you to say like, oh yeah, like I would have killed the guy. I'm just saying that like, holy fuck, like I'm in like a almost like a life or death scenario. Like this is really, really, really fucking frustrating on my end. I'm not just mad because I lost a video game, right? Yeah, I know. I see it. I know yeah. what you're talking about. I I can understand that it being it being really frustrating. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're we've really kind of like gone away from it. And what I'm trying to what I'm trying to say is like you're not dealing with. The people that you're dealing with right now, they're not these 13-year-old losers that are going to try to ruin your life. These are people like like Ian Miles Chong is just a normal dude. You know, there's a bunch of people who are just fucking normal dudes but that you no, can connect But this with. Ian guy attacks me all the time where what he does is he clips one line of text. I could go through his fucking Twitter. He's done it today where he's called me a pedophile today. Um, I think yeah. he, he's made that he wants to murder somebody claim. Like, this guy is supposed to be a fucking journalist. And he's taking these, like, horribly out of context things and throwing them at me. Like, how can you call me a pedophile and then defend Milo? That can't exist in the same universe. Yeah, I get it, but he, I think he's wrap, it just wrapped up in the whole media shit. Everyone's wrapped up in the whole media shit. He I mean, look, came I, after me first. I, well, How I can you say he's wrapped I, I, up? I, I, I came out. I came after you first. Are you kidding me? I came out. Of, I came out of nowhere and just blasted you because I'm. I'm also wrapped up in the whole like entertainment aspect of this and like and like kind of like calling people out, you know, like getting this rush from like all likes and stuff like that. And it's just something that happens. This is just stuff like that that you get wrapped up in, especially if you start growing rapidly. So you have to keep yourself in check, and they like, keeping yourself in check involves you know obviously having an audience that holds you accountable and my audience does hold me accountable which is why i ended up here because i started noticing that some people in my audience were like you know they're like no they're like you should probably go and talk to him like why don't you talk to him you know all you right. talk you talk about talking all the time so why don't you fucking talk to this guy so that's all i'm saying like the idea is that i'm sure that like they these guys are like they're not like I wouldn't be associating with them if I thought that they were complete these complete fucking animals that aren't open to reason. Like that's no way, no way whatsoever. So I feel like you would be able to talk to them if you just kind of maybe like I don't know. I have, I don't know. Do you use Twitter? I mean, I, I you're not. I guess you're not as confident being in front of a camera as, as much on like Twitter video or something like that. But like I find that that's really helped in terms of like really breaking a barrier. Like just kind of like showing up, smiling, and be like, hey, this is what I want to talk about. Um. And uh, most of the time when I roast people is when I quote tweet them and then I say something that way. But I, it's rare that like I'll come in with, straight with a video with a roast. Rare.